In this segment, I'm going to tell you a story of Funovation. It's a small, entirely customer-funded business that today is the world leader in laser mazes. But it's not only the world leader, it's a wonderful example of how a couple of scrappy entrepreneurs like you, maybe, can build a customer-funded business from scratch using a pay-in-advance model. So first, what's a laser maze, you ask? Well, it's an attraction, typically in a large entertainment or amusement facility, Disney, Six Flags, Ripley's, and so on. The idea is, of course, to work your way through the maze marked by colorful laser beams and you have to reach the goal and you have to do that in a faster time than other people do. So you're competing against one another, it takes brains, brawn, agility, and so on. Young kids love it, teenagers love it, young adults love it too. So it's a great party sort of thing. In 2005, Ted Zimkowski cobbled together some lasers, some sensors, and some other electronic gizmos in his basement in Colorado. And in doing so, he created the first ever laser maze that was not on a movie lot. In fact, if you had stopped by Ted's house back then, when there was a party going on, you could have had some serious fun challenging the laser maze in Ted's basement. Now, in 2007, Ted and a couple of Boulder friends decided, you know, this maze is cool enough that we could market it commercially. So Funovation was born. One of Ted's friends, Eric Miller, went online and started calling local entertainment venues all over the USA to see if he could sell one. Because after all, if you've got a paying customer, that means you maybe have a business too, right? So before long, he found a potential customer in the owners of Oasis Fun Park in Pennsylvania they expressed interest in the deal. Meanwhile, the guys decided that they would get a booth at the upcoming trade show called IAPA. It's the big trade show in Florida every year that serves the global amusement industry. Everybody comes there. So they built a maze in a trailer, and four of them, plus two helpers, hit the road for Orlando, taking a small booth inside the trade show and parking the trailer at the trade show's entrance. The trailer was so busy, from open to close every day, recalls Eric, that we couldn't even find time to go pee. The results of the show, number one, it was the world debut of laser mazes outside the movie industry. Number two, they got some great press because it was so cool. And number three, and most importantly, they got a signed contract with Oasis Fun Park and a $20,000 check, the down payment, and the down payment cleared and a hundred leads from all over the world that Miller, the commercial guy, could start to pursue. Now, in reality, they hadn't actually built a commercially viable maze yet, so that was the next step now that they had a customer in hand. Zimkowski and the fourth co-founder, an engineer named John Bon Valet, got cracking and delivered the first laser maze challenge to Oasis in October to rave reviews. This little company was on its way. But that meant the team needed a plan for how to go forward. So Miller set two goals. Number one, I want to win one of the leading multi-unit amusement operators, so I have a reference client that everybody will look up to. Number two, I want to win an overseas account, because if we win a, an account outside the US, everybody will think we're a global company instead of this little four-person company that we really are. So good news, by the end of 2008, they'd secured a multi-unit agreement from Ripley's, believe it or not, and they'd installed another unit in Dubai, and they had another one under contract in Norway. The business was on its way. Miller then started signing up distributors for Europe and for Asia, called on the US prospects himself, and he had a nice list there, and growth began to take off. So fast forwarding to 2015, there are now 252 units, Funovation units in 27 countries. Funovation is in seven of the world's top 10 multi-unit amusement operators like Disney, Six Flags, Ripley's, and so on. And they have a handful of patents too. But what's probably of most interest to you who are taking this MOOC is this very important fact. The company's startup and its growth, other than those very early costs of Ted's experimenting in his basement and the cost for that first trailer and the first trade show, has been entirely funded by its customers' cash. 
as you've seen so far in this MOOC, the learning here is not going to come just from me. So in the very next segment, Eric Miller is going to join us, and he'll tell you the story of the company's first year or so, just where many of you are now in your business, and he'll tell that story in considerable granular detail. You're going to learn something in the next segment about customer funding, of course, but you're also going to get a few other crucial lessons that will help you as an entrepreneur. Number one, what does a great entrepreneurial team look like? Number two, how do you get customers to pay you in advance for something that doesn't even exist yet? Number three, how do you then go from that first customer to the second, to the fifth, to the tenth, and so on? And then finally, in laser mazes, why has the amusement industry been so receptive to this revolutionary new idea? So here we go, off to meet Eric Miller. Thank you.